Good evening. This is a meeting of the Township Committee, July 17, 2023. The notice requirements provided for in the Open Public Meetings Act have been satisfied. Notice of this meeting was properly given by transmission to the Asbury Park Press, the Middletown Sun, and the Two River Times, and by posting at the Middletown Township Municipal Building and filing with the Township Clerk all on January 5, 2023. Committeeman Clark. Committee Woman Kratz. Here. Committeeman Sedembrino. Here. Deputy Mayor Highbell. Here. Mayor Perry. Here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I'd like to ask for a moment of silence to honor the troops serving worldwide, defending our constitutions, freedoms, and way of life. Thank you. Our first item on tonight's agenda, we have the administration of oath of office. We'll be swearing in uh, new police officers. At this time, I'd like to invite the uh, our first um, officer, Sarah Dur Durasmo. Please come forward with your family. I, Sarah Dur Durasmo, I, Sarah Durasmo, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith. I will bear true faith and allegiance, allegiance to, the same, to the same and to the governments established, the governments established in, the United States in the United States and in this state, in this state under, the authority of the people. under the authority of the people. And I do swear to faithfully, to faithfully impartially, and justly perform, and justly perform all of the duties, the duties of police officer according to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help you God. Congratulations. Next, I'd like to invite Officer Kenny Kozak to please come forward with your family. Oh, 
I, Kenny Kozak. I, Kenny Kozak. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution of the state of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the state of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith. And I will bear true faith. And allegiance. And allegiance. To the same. To the same. And to the governments established. And to the governments established. In the United States. In the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And I do swear. To faithfully, to faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly perform, justly perform all of the duties, all the duties of police officer, police officer, according to the best of your ability, according to the best of my ability. So help you God. So help you God. Congratulations, officer. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> I've seen that play before. <laughs> Thank you. All right, and one more. One, two, three. Thank you. Congratulations. Deputy yeah. Chief Bailey? Uh, actually, I defer to uh, Deputy Chief Moore, yeah. Acting Chief Moore. Okay. Chief Moore? Yeah, she gets sworn first, ladies first. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? What's that number? 647? 409? 407? 409? Okay. Um, actually, which, which one are you, John? 302. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a little very strong. Just for those that don't know Sarah, she's um, a lifelong resident of Middletown here, so it's not often that we um, were able to bring someone in that's lived here their entire lives. Uh, in addition to that, she's actually been a teacher for almost a decade in Middletown. So to give up that kind of job and security that job, take a job here because she felt that she had a different calling as much as she loved teaching, I think says a lot about her character and a lot about who she is as a person and uh, what her values are. The first so, thing I did was look at the Board of Ed president and said, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I win. Because as she expressed to us, she just felt that this was something else that she felt she needed to do in her life and it was important to her. That means a lot to us. I hope that means a lot to the, uh, the town here, too. So she has her background. She's got um, a four-year degree from Monmouth University. She uh, didn't stop there. She also went to was it Western Governors University, where she got her master's degree in education and mathematics, I believe, right? So um, she's very well-educated, very intelligent uh, woman. We are, we are very excited to have her join our team. So. Please give a round of applause. Thank you for having me. Um, he said, accomplished uh, sheriff's officer from Monmouth County. So it's a family thing here. And um, maybe in another uh, two decades, we'll be swearing in maybe your son at some point. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> got a little, little ways to go. I will not be here. <laughs> Just like it. Imagine what badge number we'll be up to. Okay. Um, First, I would just like to uh, take a moment and thank Mayor Perry and the members of the uh, Township Committee for the really the amazing support that they offer the police department. In this day and age, uh, where we've seen a lot of situations throughout the country, that, that isn't a universal truth, but the officers, uh, the men and women of the Middletown Township Police know that they have uh, a really a strong foundation of support. Uh, thanks to the hard work and dedication of the mayor and the, and the members of the committee. Uh, tonight, swearing-ins, promotions, these are, these are really the great events that we have 
at the police department, in addition to Officer Durasmo, not Ms. Durasmo anymore, sorry. Uh, uh, we also have uh, Officer Kozak. Officer Kozak uh, comes to us with uh, really a, a, a truly unique background for the Middletown Township Police Department. He is a member of the New Jersey National Guard, uh, which other members of our agency uh, are a part of. So it shows a lot about his character and the dedication to not just community, but also the state and indeed the entire country. But uh, Officer Kozak has a unique uh, skill set where he serves our country as a certified Black Hawk helicopter pilot, um, which is- uh, We're buying a helicopter? <laughs> Hey, Mike, <laughs> let's see, let's see. Uh, so, hey, don't give me wrong. Hey, you know, it's right on, let's go. Uh, it's uh, it, it's just we we have this uh, uh, opportunity to hire two really exceptional uh, officers, and uh, we're, we're proud of both of them, and we're happy that they are they're on board. And we look forward to uh, seeing them continue their service to our community and our country. We wish you both all the best. Uh, I just want to say uh, one more thing. Obviously, congratulations to our two newest officers. Um, but uh, I know it's been a whirlwind uh, of a couple of weeks for our for our police department, uh, and I saw several of them. Obviously, here always here in support. And our PBA president, state delegate, all, all of our deputy chiefs are here tonight. Um, and uh, to everybody, you know, our entire police department that you know they, they've had a, a better couple of weeks. Uh, I know, but I, I just want to say thank you on behalf of the entire governing body. Um, we're always going to be there for you. You can always count on that, even though I didn't respond to again yesterday uh, in the text message. Um, but you're, you're joining an incredible police department because of the people that make it up. And uh, we're honored to have you alongside those brave men and women. So thank you all very much and congratulations to both of you. Sorry, Heidi. Next item on tonight's agenda, we have a certificate of, the pro and, um, of appreciation proclamations. Our first one is the presentation recognizing Middletown High School North Baseball Team for winning NJSIAA Group 3 State Sectional Championship. At this time, I'd like to invite the Middletown High School North Baseball Team and coaches to join Mayor Perry. <laughs> so, uh, boy, it, I, I, I honestly believe it's been like three or four township committee meetings in a row. We've had a championship uh, team, and I think the odds are in North, definitely in North's favor right now. Uh, but but it, it looked, take it easy. I hear you <laughs> laughing over there, Paul. You know, easy. But uh, it, it's it's always phenomenal to uh, to bring in and celebrate great achievement. Uh, and Middletown High School North baseball team once again showed that that achievement was on display for everyone in Middletown, and more importantly for the state of New Jersey to see the talent. Uh, and, and given the fact that I'm a baseball fanatic, a little too crazy, I think at times, uh, to, to see year after year that, that success and that you know, excel at this, at this perfect game uh, really means a lot. And the fact that we get to time after time bring in 
champions, champions, champions with a championship mindset is what's most important because the achievements that you make during your high school years is going to carry on. So let's give it up for our uh, our champions, our group, group three state sectional champions in high school in North Brooklyn. So I'll be brief. Um, this is obviously not the entire team. That'd be even more impressive if we don't have one. <laughs> One of the things that Alfield and yeah, yeah, he pitched, he pitched really well. So Gabe, um, you know, I'll actually kind of point to one line he had from last year because I missed the ceremony last year. My my son was actually being born. So it's nice that we got to run it back. But um, when we were texting last year, later in the summer, we had a lot more guys around. He was like, oh, coach, like, I'm sorry, I have a game. I'll just be at the next day championship. I said, yeah, absolutely. Like, that sounds good. So uh, it's, it's nice having him back and getting to do that. But a lot of our guys, because of the weather this weekend, had rain out to push back their games. So it's the good and bad of playing high level and competitive baseball that you now you have games on every day. Um, but really appreciate the acknowledgement. Means a lot. Means a lot seeing a lot of you guys at games throughout the season. Closing down the road, so nice touch. Nice touch. So uh, really, really cool environment. And couldn't be more appreciative of it. Thank you. Well, let me, let me just say something. You really know you're, you're looking at a great achievement when they come with their championship rings. And I said, Man, that's pretty cool. That's last year's, you know, we'll, we'll get the new ones uh, to add to, they're like Tom Brady up here with the, you know, the number of fingers. But uh, coach, um, players, congratulations. Well, well deserved because of all the effort, time, practice that you put into excelling at this sport. Bring it home next year, make it three in a row. All right, you got it. Let's give it up. You'll do some damage with that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So one, two, three. Thank you. And please um, stay for a few more folks. Thank you. All right. Congratulations, guys. Our next item on tonight's agenda, we have a proclamation recognizing July 10th, 2023 as Camp Happiness Day in the Township of Middletown. We have a proclamation recognizing Jersey Shore Work Camp for 2023 Interfaith Home Repair Mission Project. And a proclamation recognizing August 1st, 2023 as National Night Out in the Township of Middletown. Our next item, we have approval of minutes for June 5th, 2023 workshop meeting and June 19th, 2023 regular meeting. Motion to approve. Second. Committee Woman Kratz. Yes. Committee Man Senembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Highbell. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries to approve minutes. For public hearing of proposed ordinances, we have our first ordinance 2023-3374 an ordinance amending chapter 336-2 of the code of the township of Middletown governing collection times for solid waste and recycling. 
Any member of the public wishing to speak on public ordinance number 2023-3374? Seeing no member of the public stepping forward, move to close the public portion and approve. Second. Committeewoman Kratz. Yes. Committeeman Sedembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Heibel. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries to pass ordinance 3374 on second and final reading. At this time we have 2023-3375, a bond ordinance amending bond ordinance number 2019-3277, finally adopted by the Township Committee of the Township of Middletown, New Jersey on December 2nd, 2019. Any member of the public wish to speak on public ordinance number 2023-3375? Seeing no member of the public stepping forward, move to close the public portion and approve. Second. Committee Woman Kratz. Yes. Committee Ben Sedembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Heibel. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries pass this ordinance on second and final reading. At this time, we have ordinance 2023-3376, an ordinance authorizing financial agreement upon block 1086, lot 30, 100 Schultz Drive, with Exit 109 Urban Renewal 5 LLC, an urban renewal entity uh, pursuant to the Long Term Tax Exemption Law, NJSA 40A colon 20 1 at SEC. Any member of the public wishing to speak on public ordinance number 2023 3376? Seeing no member of the public stepping forward, move to close the public portion and approve. Second. Committee Woman Kratz. Yes. Committee Man Sedembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Heibel. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries to pass this ordinance on second and final reading. And we have ordinance 2023-3377, ordinance governing regulation of short-term rentals of real property and associated associated amenities. Any member of the public wishing to speak on public ordinance number 2023-3377. Mark. All right, it's just going through this one and um, Mark Saparowski, 38 Palo Alto. Um, this is kind of counterproductive. And when you were running for re-election, you said that you wanted to get rid of zombie properties, right? A lot of developers can come in and buy these zombie properties and turn them around and make them into Airbnb rentals, fix them up, rent them out for $2,000, $3,000, $4,000 a week. Are they going to have a dilapidated property sitting there or are they going to have a property that's kept up then bringing tourists in from out of town spending money in town at the local restaurants and shops and things like that um so bringing revenue to the town i think it's a little i think it's a little short-sighted i think that should be why aren't they doing it now so short-term rentals are not bringing revenue to the town with tourists that are coming in? No. How can you prove that? If somebody's coming from out of town and staying at a short-term rental and, and going to the local restaurants, the local bars, the local clothing shops, whatever might be around, how is that not bringing new revenue to the town? Rather than going, well, but my, my Mark, thing is, is, rather than going out and outright hey, Mark, banning it, maybe me. you can look at a way to tax the short-term rental similar to how they do it in you other were, towns you were talking about zombie properties you weren't talking right about, so we're talking about short-term rentals currently okay but i'm using that as a reference in that so should somebody be, might come in and take a zombie property and turn it around into a short-term rental no we, we don't have we, no one is doing that okay are you going to argue that revenue is not coming into the town with a short-term rental new yeah. revenue no yeah if and now people and, and are you concerned at all about taxpayer money that might be spent on somebody that would put a lawsuit up about their first amendment rights to what to do with their property no you're not concerned about no money spent on a lawsuit no because why so so you you allegedly take the the business approach to this so here's my question under this ordinance, you're not allowed to rent out some your swimming pool to somebody because that's now a thing under an app called Swimply. Okay, you can rent out your swimming pool. You can have them have 
uh, fire pits for extra money. You can have swimmies for your kids for extra money. You can have all those things. Yet, every other entity that has a public pool that allows people to come in publicly has to be inspected by our health department. Okay, under, under this, that says, well, that's not fair to the business owners that are, have swimming pools because they have to be inspected by the health department. There's things that have to be required under, under the current ordinances of the town. So should people just be allowed to buy out someone's pool for a day? Do you think that's fair? Well, I, th I think going and doing a yes blanket. Yes or no? No. Okay. But I don't think doing a blanket ban on it, I think it's short-sighted. I think it should be investigated more before you rush to pass an what, ordinance. What, what would you like us to investigate? Well, I think there's other ways to go about it so that people can use their property for what they've... We, we have people who are illegally doing it now and people complain about it. Given my, my take on it, I think that banning short-term rentals is a little short-sighted for the future of the town. Just saying, because you're bringing new people into the town. Tell, you haven't given me one positive. New revenue into the town. What revenue? Outside revenue. People that don't live in Middletown spending their money on local Middletown establishments. That to me is a is a net positive. It's not if bringing so, outside so, revenue so not, into the town. Middletown's not gaining any revenue. The business is in Middletown. Okay. That so that that's that's why we shouldn't allow for we should allow people to rent out a house next door to them for a week. Absolutely. And cause chaos. Because if but the people who are owning those houses are maintaining them so you, that they can get that money for the you house. You started out saying that these were zombie properties. No, That's I'm saying you're, you're, you wanted to get rid of zombie properties. So maybe you should go, hey, we have these zombie properties. Maybe there's some developers out there that want to take these and make something out of them. An incentive. Abandoned houses to have to register them every year and pay a fee. Michael. Register them and pay a fee if they're going to rent out those houses. I mean, if they're going to continue owning those houses. So um, it's an incentive to get people to now sell those properties or upgrade those properties. Because as long as the house is vacant, they're going to pay an annual fee, which gets higher and higher year after year. And so that's a, an ordinance we've already put in place to a year get rid ago. Of those properties. No, that's my part. Okay, I just you. wish you wouldn't rush through it. I wish it would you know, be heard a little bit more. Okay, well, to that point, I introduced this ordinance a year ago, and in order to talk to the Apartment Association and other interested parties that were not in favor of this, I did have discussions with them. So to say that I didn't is completely false. You never asked me. Last year, I introduced this ordinance. That ordinance never got heard at, at a public hearing because I pulled it from the agenda. So to say that I didn't investigate it is... A, is Incorrect in every sense. Okay. Okay. Any other member of the public wishing to speak on public ordinance number 2023-3377? Seeing no other member of the public stepping forward, move to close the public portion and approve. Second. Uh, Committee Woman Kratz. Yes. Committee Men Sedembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Heibel. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries to pass this ordinance on second and final reading. At this time, we have ordinance 2023-3378, an ordinance permitting and licensing itinerant retail food handling establishments. Any member of the public wishing to speak on public ordinance number 2023-3378? Seeing no member of the public stepping forward, move to close the public portion and approve. Second. Committee Woman Kratz. Yes. Committee Woman Senembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Highbell. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries to pass this ordinance on second and final reading. This time we have ordinance 2023-3379, an ordinance amending ordinance number 2022-3344, authorizing granting of certain deeds of easement upon portions of township owned property pursuant to the Raritan Bay and Sandy Hook Bay hurricane and storm, war, uh, storm Damage Reduction Project, Port Monmouth, New Jersey, Phase 2, Contract 5. Any member of the public wishing to speak on public ordinance number 2023-3379? Seeing no member of the public stepping forward, move to close the public portion and approve. Second. 
Committee Woman Kratz. Yes. Committee Woman Sedembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Highbell. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries to pass this ordinance on second and final reading. This time we have introduction of proposed ordinances. Our first ordinance 2023-3380, an ordinance banning smoke shops and vape shops as a permitted use in any zone district in the township of Middletown and requiring licensure for all pre-existing smoke shops and vape shops and for the pre-existing sale of electronic smoking devices and smoking device paraphernalia in business establishments. Motion to introduce. Second. Committee Woman Kratz. Yes. Committee Man Sedembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Highbell. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries pass this ordinance on first reading with a public hearing to be held August 17th, 2023. Oh, I'm sorry. It's August 21st. Thank you, Karen. 2023 public hearing. At this time, we have ordinance 2023-3381. A bond ordinance providing an appropriation of $1,350,000 for the acquisition of easements for the Port Monmouth flood control project by and for the Township of Middletown in the County of Monmouth, New Jersey, and authorizing the issuance of $1,282,500 in bonds or notes of the Township for financing part of the appropriation. Motion to introduce. Second. Committee Women Kratz. Yes. Committee Women Sedembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Highbell. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries to pass this ordinance on first reading with a public hearing to be held August 21st, 2023. At this time, we have ordinance 2023-3382, an ordinance providing, bond ordinance providing an appropriation of $355,000 for various improvements to Forsey Park and Croydon Park by and for the Township of Middletown in the County of Monmouth, New Jersey, and authorizing issuance of $337,250 in bonds or notes of the township for financing part of the appropriation. Motion to introduce. Second. Committee Women Kratz. Yes. Committee Men Sedembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Highbell. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries to pass this ordinance on first reading with a public hearing to be held August 21st, 2023. This time we have ordinance 2023-3383, a bond ordinance providing an appropriation of $1,025,000 for various capital improvements by and for the Township of Middletown in the County of Monmouth, New Jersey, and authorizing the issuance of $734,445 in bonds or notes of the Township of Middletown for financing part of the appropriation. Motion to introduce. Second. Committee Woman Kratz. Yes. Committee Man Sedembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Highbell. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries pass this ordinance on first reading with a public hearing to be held 821 2023. This time we have ordinance 2023 3384, a salary ordinance for 2023 uh, through 2024. Motion to introduce. Second. Committee Woman Kratz. Yes. Committee Woman Sedembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Highbell. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries pass this ordinance on first reading with a public hearing to be held August 21st, 2023. At this time, we have ordinance 2023-3385, an ordinance amending townships low SAP ordinances to allow for a rate adjustments by resolution. Motion to introduce. Second. Committee Woman Kratz. Yes. Committee Woman Sedembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Highbell. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries to pass this ordinance on first reading with a public hearing to be held August 21st, 2023. And our, we have ordinance 2023 3386, an ordinance providing Funding for site remediation costs and various improvements at the municipal complex for the township of Middletown and appropriating $250,000 for such purpose. Motion to introduce. Second. Committee Woman Kratz. Yes. Committee Woman Sedembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Highbell. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries to pass this ordinance on first reading with a public hearing to be held August 21st, 2023. 
This time I'd like to ask the Township Committee to adopt the consent agenda, which would include resolutions 23-188 through 23-199. Including a firefighter application for approval for Kevin Mori. Motion to approve. Second. Committee Woman Kratz. Yes. Committee Woman Sanambrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Highbell. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries to adopt consent agenda. At this time, we have Township Committee comments. All right. Committee Woman Sanambrino. Oh, leading us off tonight. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> I, I had asked Committee Woman Clark not to come tonight, so I guess so you should do it. Come. Okay. <laughs> Tonight, I only have a, uh, a congratulations and a question. Certainly, I certainly want to congratulate our, our two new officers. It's great that um, uh, Officer Durazo has been uh, in town for all her life and uh, has now decided to continue to serve the town. That's that's just fantastic. I um, want to congratulate our uh, high school North uh, baseball team as well. And the only question, Mayor, I have is when are we getting our Black Hawk helicopter? I don't know, but Officer <laughs> Ko Ko Kozak is on the case, I think. That's all I have for this evening. All right. Committee Woman Kratz. Thank you, Mayor. I also will be brief and just offer my congratulations to both of our officers and also to the boys baseball team. Congratulations to everyone. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Yes, I just got to thank our team for doing a, a, a wonderful job at our uh, grand opening here of this building uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, I, I didn't expect as many people as we had there. I think we're in excess of 2,000 people. Just an just amazing night for uh, for the for this building in this uh, community, so uh, thank you. I know Laura, you're here, so you get a lot of credit. But uh, thank you, everyone. Our team did a wonderful job. Um, that's all I have, Mayor. All right. Uh, I want to echo everyone's comments. I, I especially want to thank uh, the public that came out for the the uh, ribbon cutting of town hall. It was it, the deputy mayor said it right. It was extraordinary to see. Um, I want to thank. Uh, our fire department, and EMS, that's here tonight. Uh, in particular, uh, Mr. John Drucker, who's here tonight, uh, for his leadership, we introduced a ordinance amending our LOSAP program uh, that gives our volunteers a well-deserved uh, small token of our appreciation for everything that they do. And uh, Chief Morrissey, Chief uh, Chief Kelly are here tonight as well. I want to thank them. Um, for their leadership, uh, but uh, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that this uh, this increase, I think 30% 30, 30 increase, uh, I was gonna ask Raven, but uh, <laughs> but uh, no, but uh, but this uh, this increase in, in LOSAP um, is, is well-deserved and we appreciate everything that all of you do in order to keep our community safe. So thank you very much. Look forward to passing this ordinance uh, at our next meeting, but once again, I want to thank all of you that are here tonight representing our first responders um, for for your service to the community. So thank you guys. Um, and then finally, I just want to um, recognize and thank um, Gail and Bill Bechtel uh, from Koch Florist. Um, they are have been a. Uh, I think Gail's father started. Koch florists. I don't even know how many years ago, but not only did they provide all of the the uh, flowers for our grand opening, um, but for free. But they uh, each year, I think it's every year, or every two years, host the Jersey Shore Work Camp, and it's every year. Okay. So, for those of you who don't know, um, Gail and Bill host. It's got to be more than 100 kids from all across the country who come to New Jersey. They come to Hazlitt and they stay at the Hazlitt Middle School during the summer and they perform community projects for people with disabilities, senior citizens, and more than 40 homes had been fixed up in some way, shape, or form by these 100 plus young men and women um, who in no way, shape or form know the people living there. They don't ask any questions. It is all about community service and they live in a middle school for a week. But when I walked into this room, into the, into the gym last Thursday, the energy 
was like an NFL football game. I mean, of a good team. It was not the Jets or anything like that. You know, it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable, and to see to see that energy year after year. I don't think I've missed a year yet that that they've hosted it, but I, I just have a nothing but amazing things to say about people like that who want no recognition at all. They don't want to come to a township committee meeting. They don't want to be, have the spotlight shown on them. They just want to do good for the community. And to know that there are kids from Kentucky and from and uh, Iowa and all over that are coming to Middletown, New Jersey to help out is just amazing to me. Um, and to build ramps and to, to reside houses and to paint front doors and, and replace windows, it, it just, it takes a lot. And it takes a lot to coordinate that. Um, and my, my hat is off to them for everything that they do for the community. So uh, they won't come to a township committee meeting because they don't think it's right to get, um, to get recognized for doing good in the community. But I want to give them the shout out that they deserve. So I want to thank Bill and Gail so much for everything that they do. So if you need flowers and you want to support them, go to Koch Florist. <laughs> um, all right, with that being said, I'll open it up for public comment. Any member of the public wishing to make a public comment may do so. We just ask that you state your name and address for the record. Ask that you keep your comments to five minutes. At four minutes, I'll let you know that you have one minute remaining. With that being said, any member of the public wishing to make a public comment? Yes, sir. Come on down. Thomas Serpa, 10 Wealthy Avenue. Um, I was here for the March meeting with the... Uh, group of tennis players and Middletown residents that play at Tyndall Park. Um, I'm with a group of them again tonight. I was initially initially here about- They're all waving to me. I'm just waving yeah. back. I don't want to be rude. Uh, initially, I was here about getting a poster paired on one of the courts. And from what I understand, that's being taken care of. Uh, can you confirm that, Ted? The, yeah, there was a problem getting that, but the, the manufacturer wasn't responding to it, so we switched to another manufacturer, and it should be with four day, within four days it should be in is what I'm hearing now. Okay. That being said, um, I'll let that be now, and I'll shift gears to a related subject. Um, last meeting, another member of our group asked about the renovation and the progress, and we were told at that point that within about two weeks, that the bids would go out and there's nothing holding it up and money was in place, but it's been four months. So where are we and what's the hold up? On the tennis courts themselves? The, the renovations that are going to take place. Well, there's a renovation now taking place. I'm just, are you talking about the tennis courts? The, the tennis courts, Ed? specifically. So the, the tennis court plans are essentially complete. And I think this is the plan to redo all those, all of the courts at one time replacing the fencing, replacing the court surface itself, the nets. Um, I believe right now they're in review with Green Acres. Is that right, Tony? Yeah, Green Acres is um, still reviewing the plan. They, before we can go out to bid for anything on a park, state Green Acres program has to review the plan, so they are Green Acres. We, hope we probably will have to um, add some additional funds because we think the estimates we, most recent estimates we got from the uh, engineers were higher than we had um, budgeted. Um, so it's not going to stop from going forward, but we probably will have to add some, some money to it. So, um, yeah, we, we hope we'll be out to, to bid this, this fall. Out to bid this fall. Okay. Um, how long do the bids stay open? When would they close from their opening date? Uh, I think they vary. From when they go out to bid, you mean? Yeah. yeah. They are, they're, they're usually four to six weeks, depending on the size of the project. We usually get a recommendation from our engineers, um, the designers, as to the the right amount of time to bid out a project. A lot of times it has to do with how many other projects are a similar type of going on at the same time because then a lot of contracts are tied up. So four to six weeks is probably okay. So six weeks max. Um if you if you do it if you do it too quickly, the the issue that comes unfortunately is then then they jack the price up so high because they want to if you want the project say Hey, we want it back in seven days or 10 days, whatever it is. They just make the cost astronomical. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not rushing that far. I just wanted to know what the holdup was because we were given a different story last time we were here. Uh, four months is a big discrepancy. Um, when was 
You also don't want to interfere with the, the people playing there, though, either. Well, it's it's got to get done. We'll, we'll take the pain. You know. Yeah, but but North plays there. Well, and and South. We so, have a North player that we'll talk about that soon. Too. We just don't want to. You, you you can't you can't stop them from. We don't we don't want to stop them from playing there either. So there's also a a there's also an examination as to you don't have to rush because the project won't be completed by the start of the season, right? Mm -hmm. So that that's something else that you have to take in because they're hosting matches, you know, that are that, that are taking place there that the NJ. S I A A something something acronym has already set forth. So would this work be able to be done over the winter? Uh, probably not. What's so the way? But you could, but you could do it. But you could do it in March, right? The way it's being set up is to do eight courts, make sure they're done, and then move on to the other eight courts. That way, there'll always be eight courts available for matches like that. Okay. Um, let me just uh, move on to another part of that. Can you give me specifics about exactly what's done? So all 16 courts, I understand lighting is only going to stay on the first eight or lighting on all 16 now. This plan just keeps the lighting on the first eight courts. Okay. Now, the big question for us is pickleball. Will there be dedicated pickleball courts or dual use courts as there are now? There's makeshift. How did I know when you walked up and said, this is going to be about pickleball? I yeah. Swear. Well, everything's about pickleball. The, the, because we are constructing pickleball courts elsewhere, we are looking to reduce the number of shared pickleball courts on tennis courts. So we are currently in the works of taking McMahon and putting the pickleball there so that we can hope since obviously it doesn't seem like anybody can play nice in the sandbox um, that we can have dedicated space for pickleball to play pickleball and dedicated courts for tennis to play tennis. Okay. When you say um, reducing the pickleball, you, we do don't, you mean specifically at Tyndall or there across will, all the parks? Two, two tennis courts will be devoted to pickleball only at Tyndall. And then, the, so there'll be 14, uh, should be 14 tennis okay. courts. And then no dual use. No dual use. No. We're okay. done with that. Well, that's that's good because a lot of people have no idea what's going on. There's rumors for that. Um, okay. I think that'll cover it for now. Okay. You got it. Any other member of the public? Yes, ma'am. Oh, hold on one second, so this, she she beat you to the punch and the serve. Good evening. Uh, I'm Donna Blaze. I live at 748 Port Monmouth Road in Port Monmouth. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to speak tonight, but I just want to reinforce the importance of doing the courts. You know, you spend millions at uh, football fields and there's millions that have been spent on soccer fields. People play soccer to the age of 20. People play tennis to the age of 90. On Saturday, we were on the courts. There wasn't one court that was open at Tyndall. All the others are too dangerous to play at. Okay, Bodmin is a disaster. Lincroft is a disaster. Half of the courts in Tyndall are dangerous to play on. They're cracked. They have weeds growing out of them. They're moldy. So, you know, it would be really sad to have someone really get hurt over there. You talk about the um, um, high school. That's These have to be the worst courts that any high school team plays in the entire county. I've been at Oceanport. They're gorgeous. I've been to Atlantic Highlands. They're gorgeous. It's really sad that Middletown, as, as population as it is, I've been living here. For 55 years, I've been playing on those courts at Tyndall. I think they've been fixed twice. Okay, it's it's um, kind of sad. You know, you have millions to do everything else, and yet the one sport well, that covers probably the broadest range of ages and participants is the least amount of attention. Well, so. the guy down here, the last guy, in the, he's still playing soccer. So to I, I don't I don't want to say that there we don't well, have. I, I would I would. And while, he is a, and while he other. is a spry 30 year old, right? He is still, I haven't seen him on the soccer the fields anytime I've been by them. So, 
I may be coaching, but it's really not a sport for that many people in any way, shape, or form that uh, tennis is. Well, I, I, I think I, it should get the attention that it, that I, it I, has I, not received. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Any other member of the, uh, yes, sir, yeah. How you doing today? Uh, Robert Nickel, Port Mama, 3 Avenue D. Um, I play on these courts as well as uh, Dorset uh, also, and uh, I've been to, to Bodmin, and I'm seeing all this stuff. I'm very uh, very pleased and optimistic about these plans we have for, rent, for improvements. Um, from a practical perspective, can we upgrade and repair the courts that we have, do some patching of the cracks, and you know, fixing the gates maybe? I mean, it, it won't take a fortune or a whole army of people do that. Because it's gonna take several years to roll out this improvement plan, this master plan. So is there some way we can oh, I, implement I mean, I, a maintenance program? I would assume by next year, you, you'll, all the courts will be done. Well, you, then we won't like start. Within, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be several over. years. Yeah, right. So in the meantime, we're gonna go several years with these cracks and this, it's actually ripped up green and we're looking at uneven blacktop on Tyndall. Um, there's many very wide cracks over Dorset, and you know about Bodmin. Um, yeah. Is there any way we can apply a few hundred dollars, get some patch down, get some some people take over there? Take and take some patching. I don't know. Yeah, we could we could do that. We have well, we have a contractor. We and our guys could do some patching too in our parks yeah. department. Parks because I, I talked with Gall Levine when he was still here, mm -hmm. and he, he, I I suggest I'll just do it, and you know I'm gonna use these materials. He said absolutely not. No, and, and there's no plan to, to fix them. So I don't know if that's continuing policy. You know, we'll, we'll take a look at the ones you mentioned, especially, and, and I'm sure there's ways we can get in there and patch them. Yeah. Even if they're going to be replaced, we could patch them temporarily. To, yeah, to kind of, it, we're going to go a couple of years. Yeah. So, you know, in the meantime, uh, and, a, you know, a socket wrench would fix the gates. I mean, there's not a whole lot of work that would be involved in doing this stuff. Yeah, well, I'll, we'll definitely take a look at them and have somebody. Okay. I right, appreciate Patch that. Them up. I haven't looked over the master plan, but you know we're going to start maybe construction in April. You know, we're, we're, I don't know how many courts do we have in the in the township? 12, 16? Well, there's sixteen at Tyndall alone. Tennis courts. No, I mean, six, no six. facilities. Tennis oh, facilities. facilities. Yeah, oh, not that many. So, no. Yeah. Dorset. Yeah. I mean, Funkel. There's one in uh, two courts in Linkroft. Yeah. Uh, I mean, in McMahon, the meantime, that's, that's, yeah. that's, McMahon's going to become all pickleball. That's right. Oh, is it? Okay. I mean, in the meantime, we have to suffer this, you know, when people have fallen, it's, it's, it's serious. So. Oh, appreciate we'll that. Take, we'll, we'll take a look at that. Yeah. And, and thanks, Mr. Maloney and Mahoney and, uh, and Maloney and uh, Eric McCoy I spoke to today as well. And they're jumping right on that post. So that was, that was encouraging. To see. Yeah, we'll, we'll take care. We'll, we'll dress them up a little bit for you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thanks for your time. Committee. I'm Blake Drummond. I live at 252 Navisink Avenue over uh, in Atlantic Highlands, but I'm a Middletown resident. <laughs> so um, just a few notes here. Mayor, you mentioned playing nice in the sandbox. We try. Um, there are altercations and there are moments and there's a lot of confrontation that happens on those courts at Tyndall, but it's not started by tennis players most of the time. And, and uh, I'll relate a quick story to you. We were playing and an individual who was headed to play pickleball was smoking a cigarette and started walking through our court during a point. After we had repeatedly asked if you could just wait for our point to be over to cross through, we've asked the pickleballers this multiple times over months and months and months. And uh, he's smoking a cigarette and I, I had to stop my point and walk over to him and say, sir, you can't smoke on these courts, which he said, tell me what to do again. I'm going to keep smoking this cigarette. That didn't go well from there. And uh, I believe the gentleman's name is Jim Moran. I'm not sure he's pickleball guy. Um, Extraordinaire. Yeah. <laughs> it, got, it just, it's that kind of, it, there are different cultures associated with the sports, which is great. I think that we do all have to get along. Um, one suggestion I have is possibly posting some rules. This is an easy thing to do. We can get some signs made. Signs are not expensive. Um, there are also cars constantly idling, patty, uh, teaches her course on the eight courts, the Middletown, you know, the Saturday kids. That's eight courts we lose all day Saturday. I think it's a noble uh, exercise teaching kids tennis. It's great. Um, there's also two private instructors that come out on Saturday and they take courts. I'm not sure if they have a permit. So with two permanent 
pickleball courts that you're proposing, we're now down to four courts, but we are missing a post, which I hope does get replaced. But of course, you know, I'm not filled with faith on that yet because it's been four months since we were told that it was going to happen. So we're down to three courts on a Saturday that we can use. And it's just not enough. Um, just a couple more points here. I would post signs that say no idling cars. There are parents of children that go to that Saturday school and they idle their cars by the courts. So the kids are breathing in carbon monoxide fumes. Um, this is posted. This is the law. So it'd be great if that was no idling. It'd be really nice. Or no, into that too. Yeah. no smoking. Yeah, just rules. Yeah. You know, no skateboards on the courts. No this, no that. It's just a simple thing. And then someone like me would be able to say there's a sign here instead of we can we can. We have rules that, you know, posted at other parks. We haven't posted at our beaches. Yeah. What, when we replace the, the fencing around, we can have it. And it'd be awesome if those drama. signs came sooner, but yeah. I, I respect the, I respect what you're saying that it has, the fence has to be replaced first. Uh, the Navis Inc. library raised $60,000 privately to assist with the renovations of their courts behind that library. So. If you do the math, that's 120 for four, so 240 for. So we're looking at uh, four, you know, 480. I'm looking, we're like half a million dollars to do all the courts, but you know, that's what that's that just, was, just just so you know, though, that was donated by the people that I know did the, did the work. So the, 60,000. Yeah, it was it was raised was, privately. I don't know the subject to public bidding laws. We have all or prevailing. Totally rules, understand. Prevailing rules I'm that. just sharing some things that have happened that I've seen happening in and around the township. Um, and uh, that's that's pretty much all I have to say about it. And I appreciate you hearing us out about the Tyndall Park tennis courts. Thank you. My pleasure. Uh, Patrick Bonacquista. 174 Crestview Drive, uh, Middletown, New Jersey. So I do play for the Middletown North tennis team. And before you did say that South plays on those courts, but they actually have four, in my opinion, nicer courts at Normandy that is a lot closer to, that is closer to their school. They play on those nice courts where these courts are sadly not in the best conditions. I've had several times where not only is it the courts, but maintenance that could be fixed, like, leaves that somehow are still there there's piles of them it's like it's so uneven and it dips down so far dust comes onto the courts i've fallen several times playing people where i have to run i'm going to fall and it's it defeats the purpose of the sport if i have to run and then there's debris on the courts which could be cleaned up easily but what's also annoying is that this may not be a tennis court problem but along with what Blake was saying about the idling cars, there are two clear signs that say, do not enter and wrong way. And I think today when I was playing at the courts, at least three cars drove by that way, driving out of the court where you can only enter. And I feel like there has to be something that we have to do about that because I've seen nearly five almost accidents that would not be good for any of us. Coming in the wrong way in Tyndall? There's a one way. Yes. Going out the entrance. Mm -hmm. But it, back to the courts, I think one thing that could be fixed with that as simple is just taking the weeds out of the cracks. So instead of the ball bouncing 15 feet above my head or me falling on the ground because of these cracks of the weeds, we take them out and we, we fix the maintenance on the sides of the courts with leaves and dust blowing onto the courts. Part, part of this plan is, uh, I, I believe it was still part of the plan is the the tree cutting along the perimeter of the of the courts themselves so that there was no more overhang from all those trees that are encroaching basically on you know clo too close to the courts to prevent the leaves from just getting trapped in the chain link fencing okay and one other thing is you uh about fixing the courts i know we play but it, i think we will have to sacrifice the summer of play because the girls play the girls team plays from fall i believe to the end of or the beginning of november and we have that break and i don't know i don't fix courts so i don't know what the optimal weather would be to fix them but you have a cold period and then the boys start playing in march so we have that open period where we play all the way to march and then we play into about the end of the school year 
and then we have all that summer, which is warm. Well, we'll try and work with the Board of Ed to find per, perhaps the, the answer to that is we'll have to find a temporary home for North, if that's the case, while the courts are being fixed uh, to allow for them to be fixed, completed, and then North can, can start playing there again. Uh, but it may just be where we have to go to Normandy or whatever the case may be, or away matches, you know, that we can try and coordinate while that work is being completed. So we'll try and time it out to, to make the least impact possible. Thank you. You're welcome. Good job. How old are you again? 16. Good for you. Our resident pickleball player, right? No. I'm kidding. <laughs> How are you? Uh, thank you again for listening to us. I concur with all my tennis Can you friends. Say name? Oh, sure. It's Anna Magri, 279 Linda Street, Belford, New Jersey. I just want to comment on the young man. The problem on the courts on the one court one and the one behind it is the grading. Are you going to fix that too? Because when it rains, it would have to be fixed. Yes. Okay. Because you're going to clear the trees in the back because they get very cleared. I just want to be. I just want to make sure. Or cut back because they get very moldy in the back. We're just we're, we're cutting like the, the the branches themselves okay. away from the fence. Okay. Because th there's two issues here. When it rains, we get a lot of debris because of how it's graded by court one and the one behind it. I guess is that court eight? Yeah. Okay. So that needs to be corrected. And then yes, cutting back the branches because what happens in the back gets very moldy. It's very slippery. Because mm -hmm. it's so, so shady back there. Correct. Mm -hmm. And one other item, the lights, are they going to be fixed? Are they going to LED over there? Ted? Because the problem with the lighting, if you can consider our input is how they're directed when you play at night, they're blinding. So we can look at that, how they're directed and kind of fix that. Maybe take our input. You have our information because yeah, the, the planning calls for, for upgrading all the lights. Okay. And where they're directed because as they're directed now, they're right in your eyes when you're trying to serve. So mm -hmm. that's just something to think about. Okay. So if we could have input when you're, you know, designing it just to, because we play on it. I'm not as long as Donna. 55 years, but about 40 something. Um, but, you know, we know what needs to be done to, to make it a great place to play. We'll make sure that the lights aren't in your eyes when you serve. Yeah, it's a problem. I want to win. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks guys. Anybody else on tennis? Okay. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, now our pickleball players. Anybody want to come up and rebuttal that? Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, any other member of the public? Wish yeah, they're not here today. What's that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Smoking. <laughs> or playing pickleball. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Mark? They can use the smoke shop. Uh, uh, Mark Saporowski, 38 Power. I have a question about Ordinance 2023-3369 that you passed in March, uh, requiring businesses to have maintain liability insurance, mm -hmm. which I have no problem with. I've paid hundreds of thousands of dollars in liability. Yeah, no problem. Okay. No, no issue with that. I got a letter from Middletown. They want a certificate of insurance. No problem. Can send it right over. But there's a $25 filing fee associated with it. Can you explain that? That's what the state filing fee. Well, it's not for the state. It's for Middletown. It's a Middletown filing fee. We, we, we now are responsible to make sure that the businesses are for collecting it. So what is the person in the office being paid for? If they're not being paid to file. Why am I paying a filing fee to send a letter in? New function. We have a new employee specifically assigned to do this. Is she on the payroll or is she being paid by these fees? So why, what is this fee for? To cover the cost of the new person that's got to do this work. We, you're looking at me like I'm, like you're. Yeah, that doesn't, isn't she hired to file these paperwork? File this paperwork? Yes. So why are the businesses being charged? Same reason that we have escrow accounts they for any builder that does anything. Doing inspections. They could, uh, every fee that somebody pays covers the cost, is intended to cover the cost 
of the time it takes township employees to administer the program, whether it's inspections or health inspections, everyone pays fees for the programs that they participate in. Okay, next topic. Oh, do you, that, I'm done with that. Next, you all want to see Middletown grow and prosper. Is that a fair statement? You want to see Middletown grow and continue to, you know, be bringing new residents and Red Bank and Homedale recently had a a uh, charter commission study to see if their form of government matched today's standards. It's a, I'm sure you're all familiar with what that is. is it, are you familiar with that? Yes, I, I, I read. I think I'm calling on you to put a vote forward to the people to see if the township would like a charter study. It's a simple yes or no. Would you like a charter study commission? And ask the people. If you care about Middletown, I think you should ask the people. Because I've gone around and asked people, would you rather have your mayor appointed for you or would you rather elect your mayor? And I haven't had one person say I'd rather have my mayor appointed. And this isn't a knock against you. Middletown has grown exponentially since the government was formed. And I think it's about time that it get reexamined by an independent group. It's never independent. That's the flaw in the charter study commission law. It's people that are uh, that put themselves on a ballot. That's, well, anybody can put themselves on the ballot. They get the signatures. If they get the vote, then they're on the commission. Yeah, but that's not that's not independent. Those are people that are going there with with. So they're voted in by the people. Yeah, but that's it, just to understand something. You, you have to understand the, the, the way this, the government's structured, right? So in the, the form of government that Middletown has is the trending form of government nationwide separately elected mayors is a dinosaur and if you look at any community where there is you know corruption crime arrests well i would prefer to have it's representation in my ward i don't have anybody yeah, representing but, my ward well so the, again we don't have a ward system because again that's a dinosaur Okay, it does. It's not the way most of the really country is trending. Well, well then why would well, then why did Red let, Bank and Homedale let, just let go to that? Well, well, Homedale did what not. What you're talking about is Homedale voted it, they, but they voted to have to have a mayor that they vote for. Yeah, because the incumbent mayor was offended that he was being kicked out of office, and, the other, and that's why he's not running for re-election this year. The other difference is is that in, in places where mayors are separately elected, they also have separate special powers that just belong to the mayor. That doesn't exist here. Right, and that's why I'm calling for you guys to see if the public, if the Middletown community would like to have a charter session, st charter study commission. It's a simple yes or no. I know this is asking, like going into to Congress and asking the senators to put in term limits. It, it, you're barking up the wrong tree. But if you really love Middletown, I would say put it out to the voters and ask them, do you want this yes or no? And if they say no, all right, you know what? We gave them a choice. But I think you should give the voters a choice for that. The voters ha have the ability to put anything that they want on the ballot. Okay, um, I just wanted to see if you guys would do it. Just putting that out there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other member of the public wishing to make a public comment? Seeing no other member of the public stepping forward, move to close the public portion and adjourn. Second. Committee Woman Kratz. Yes. Committee Men Sedembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Highbell. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries to adjourn. Have a great night, everybody.